She pushed her cart down the hall, the wheels squeaking with every roll. Lisa winced, and the sound started to grate on her nerves. It's been a long shift, and she still had six hours left in a 12-hour shift. The 12-hour shifts could be the worst, but Lisa signed up for this when she became a nurse. She went into a very understaffed profession, forcing people to work long shifts every week, but she wouldn't have it any other way. Lisa loved working as a nurse. It gave her a chance to help people and make a difference in someone's life. But tonight was one of those nights where it was starting to get difficult. Some of the people on her floor were being a bit difficult. None of them were dealing with any serious illness, but were just not happy to be in the hospital. When Lisa turned the corner, she stopped for a moment to catch a break. She leaned against the wall, running a hand through her light blonde hair. It was mostly tied back in a bun, but her bangs had come out of the clip, obscuring her view. Blue eyes closed for a moment, opening a moment later when she heard crying from a nearby hospital room. It was worrying because it was a child crying. She grabbed her cart and walked down the hall, trying to find out where the crying was coming from. The crying was coming from room 304. Lisa glanced at the chart and saw that a six-year-old girl named Jenny Moore was in the room. It said she was here recovering from pneumonia, and instantly it tugged at her heartstrings. Knocking on the door, Lisa let herself inside and smiled at the young girl, who was lying in the bed, sniffling. The girl had the same platinum blonde hair and bright blue eyes. If she looked close enough, Lisa swore she could see a few matching facial features, but that was impossible. Hi there, Lisa greeted in a soft tone. How are you? Jenny sniffed. I want my daddy. It was late, so it made sense the parents or family weren't here, but this didn't help Jenny feel any better. Well, I'm Lisa, Jenny. Do you want me to sit with you while you try to go to sleep? Jenny's eyes widened. Really? Of course, Lisa said, laughing. I see you have a few books there on the table. Why don't I read you one? A story always helps me fall asleep. The hope was that Jenny would be able to sleep after the story. She did, but just before she was about to end her shift, Lisa checked back in on Jenny to make sure she was okay. When Lisa saw that Jenny was awake, she frowned. Jenny looked sad, eyes full of tears, but then her face lit up the moment she saw Lisa. Lisa! She smiled and sat down on the edge of the bed. Morning, Jenny. How are you feeling? Jenny coughed. It's hard to sleep because I cough a lot. I know, but you do need to try to sleep. No, Jenny mumbled, folding her arms stubbornly over her chest. I don't wanna. Lisa smiled, reaching into her pocket to pull out two handkerchiefs. She preferred them to Kleenex, but had yet to use them today. It wouldn't hurt if she lost some because it was for a worthy cause. Taking a few of the hair ties in her pocket, she made little toy figures from the handkerchief and held them in front of Jenny. Lisa acted out a little story that she made up herself, doing so even when it went past her shift. It wasn't until Jenny finally fell asleep that Lisa got up and left the room. She didn't care that she was late signing off her shift because it was worth it to help Jenny fall asleep. The next day, she saw Jenny there again and spoke with her for a while. Lisa learned that Jenny's father was away on a business trip, so while he was gone, her aunt was keeping an eye on her. Her aunt would visit during the day and then leave before returning in the morning. Lisa loved spending time with Jenny. She didn't mind giving her a little extra attention when the little girl was missing her dad. Her aunt was doing what she could, but she was only one person. For a moment, she wondered where Jenny's mother was. It wasn't a question she was going to ask Jenny. This was a little girl she was talking about, and it could be traumatic. There was the fear that she was overstepping her boundaries a little bit, but Lisa couldn't resist giving Jenny a little bit more attention. She didn't have kids at this point in her life. One day, Lisa wanted a kid. However, for now, she was content taking care of kids during her shifts at the hospital. But there was just something about Jenny that drew Lisa. She felt connected to the little girl in some way. It was hard to explain. In a way, Jenny reminded Lisa of herself when she was young. The few days Lisa took care of Jenny while she was in the hospital passed by quickly. When Jenny told her excitedly one evening that her dad would be there soon, she smiled. 
Really? Do you know when he's coming back? Jenny giggled. He said he will be here tonight. I don't know when, but soon. Daddy promised. Well, I'm glad for you, Jenny. I know you missed him, she sniffed. I did. And you'll be able to go home with him in three days, too, she exclaimed. All your tests have come back normal, so you are strong enough to leave. Jenny grinned. It's because I'm tough. Auntie said that. I don't know what it means, but she said it's a good thing. It is. Laughing, Lisa ruffled Jenny's hair and then got up to leave. When she left the room, Lisa ended up running into a very tall, lean man. Oh, I'm sorry, Lisa squeaked out, taking a few steps back. The man was handsome, with deep brown eyes and curly deep brown hair, tousled in a way she wanted to run her fingers through it. Lisa quickly pushed those thoughts to the back of her mind. It wasn't appropriate. No, it's all right, he said, chuckling. How is Jenny, by the way? Lisa blinked. May I ask whom I'm speaking to? I'm her father, he said, holding out his hand. Robert Moore. She blushed, slowly taking his hands. My name is Lisa, and I'm sorry. I hope I didn't offend you. No, not at all. I understand you can't be giving out personal information to anyone who asks. Well, she's in there and excited to see you. I must get back to work, but it was nice to meet you. He smiled. Nice to meet you, Lisa. She hurried off, trying to ignore the increased beating of her heart. The man was very attractive. Lisa felt the need to swoon. It wasn't appropriate because he was a patient father. Besides, three days from he would be taking her home for good. She wouldn't be able to see Jenny again, which was going to hurt a little bit. The kid was sweet and the two of them formed a bit of a bond. This was Lisa's fault. She shouldn't have allowed herself to get so close to a patient, especially a child. But a stop would be put to in the coming three days for now, so she wasn't worried. Lisa did check in on Jenny later that night, and she was fast asleep. For once, the little girl looked very peaceful. It helped that her father... Oh. Oh. Her father was there sleeping on the chair. Lisa slowly started to close the door, but before she could, his eyes opened and locked hers. In a moment of panic, she shut the door a little too loudly and rushed back to her cart. He didn't get a very good look at her. He hated having to be away from his daughter, but being a single father meant he had to juggle work and being a father. When he realized he'd be on a business trip, he made plans for his sister to watch Jenny. She worked from home, so she was able to care for her when she got home from school. Then Jenny got sick with a bad case of pneumonia. This happened on the same day Robert had to leave. When he got the phone call, he panicked, but his sister told him that she didn't have to worry about it. She would watch over Jenny. Robert's job wasn't going to be happy if he had to bail on his trip, putting his job in jeopardy. With the assurance of his sister, Robert knew his daughter was going to be safe. He talked with her when he could, and he missed her so much. The day Robert learned he could come back home, he was thrilled. He headed straight to the hospital, but what he found was something surprising. There was a nurse in there talking to Jenny, making her laugh. Jenny had mentioned she had made a nurse friend at the hospital, and this must be her. Smiling, he watched and listened. The woman seemed embarrassed when she bumped into him, but Robert did his best to put her at ease. After seeing his daughter, he decided that he was going to spend the night in the hospital. Coming morning, Robert didn't regret it, even with the pain in his neck and back. He yawned, glancing over at Jenny, who was also starting to stir. Morning, Jenny, she yawned. Morning, Daddy. Suddenly, someone outside the door knocked. Jenny jerked upright and grinned. It's Lisa saying goodbye, Daddy, he chuckled. Come in, Lisa. Jenny's eager to see you. She came in, an adorable blush dusting her pale cheeks. Morning, Robert. Morning, Jenny. Jenny giggled. Morning, Lisa. Are you going home to sleep? Yes, I am, she said with a tired smile. But I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, okay? Uh -uh. The next two days, Robert took off from work, spending as much time at the hospital as he could. This meant he was also spending a lot of time with Lisa. When Jenny was asleep or there was some downtime, 
the two got to talking and sharing a few things about themselves. Lisa was in her late 20s working full-time as a nurse. She lived with her roommate and liked to stay at home and relax during her free time. He was in his 30s, working a successful career as a business person. There were some clear differences, but their personalities meshed well together. He came to like their conversations, and whenever she interacted with Jenny, his daughter broke out into smiles. She liked Lisa a lot. It was nice to see that when he or his sister couldn't be here, Jenny was safe. But soon came the day Jenny was to be discharged. His daughter was thrilled to finally get out of the hospital. She was bursting with energy, bouncing up and down in the bed. When Lisa came in, her grin widened. Can I leave? Yes, you can leave, Lisa said, smiling. You are officially discharged and ready to get back home. Jenny ran over to Lisa, wrapping her arms around her waist. I miss you, Lisa. Can you visit? Jenny pleaded. Lisa looked over at Robert, a look of panic in her eyes. I wouldn't mind, but I understand if you can't, because of the rules and regulations of your job. I... Well, once Jenny is discharged, she won't be a patient anymore, so technically it won't be a problem. Grinning, Robert grabbed a pen and notepaper from the nightstand drawer. He scribbled down his address and handed it to Lisa. Feel free to stop by any time in the afternoons. Jenny is home by school then, and I'm usually home an hour or so later. Lisa accepted the address, looking a little uncertain, but she put it in her pocket despite the uncertainty. Thank you. If I get a chance, I'll stop by, Jenny. Jenny was thrilled with the answer while Robert was wondering what the heck got into him. He couldn't believe he had given an address to someone who was a stranger, but she felt so familiar to him. That was the startling part. He had no idea if Lisa was going to show up. A part of himself was convinced that he wouldn't, but when he came home from work about a week after Jenny got out of the hospital, he found Lisa there. When she saw him, she dropped what she was holding, turning bright red. Afternoon, Lisa. She smiled nervously. Afternoon, Robert. I hope I'm not intruding. No, Jenny cried out, glaring at her father. Daddy tells Lisa that she isn't intruding. Robert grinned. Intruding? Yeah, tell her she's not doing that. You're not intruding Lisa, he insisted. Jenny loves having you over, and I do too. Why don't you consider staying for dinner? She bit down on her bottom lip. I, uh, I all right. I suppose I can join the two of you for dinner. Excellent. A few days after joining them for dinner, Lisa ends up coming over for dinner again. They share their phone numbers, giving them a chance to talk outside when Lisa comes out. Lisa was working full-time as a nurse, so she couldn't come over all the time. However, it was the same with him. Robert also had to work full-time. To make things worse, Robert's parents were coming to town in a few weeks. This was a problem because they were pressuring him into getting married again, or at least getting into a meaningful relationship. According to them, being single since his wife passed five years ago was much too long for Jenny to be without a mother. He needed to find a wife or at least take steps to get one. Robert wasn't looking forward to being pressured. When he lamented this to his sister Robin, she suggested the craziest thing. Why don't you just get someone to pose as your fake fiancé? He balked. Lisa, that's crazy. But it will get mum and dad off your back. Isn't it worth it? Robin, even if I did go along with your crazy idea, who would I get to pose as my fake fiancé? Robin smirked. That lady Lisa you've become friends with over the past few weeks. No, I can't do that, he muttered. She's a new friend, like you said, and the idea is just crazy. His sister shrugged. Well, it's up to you if you want mom and dad to be hounding you over getting engaged or finding someone. Watch, they'll get in the city and will try to start setting you up with every single woman they can find. When Robert talks to his parents again, his mother suggests that she has a few women she can set him up with when they get into town. This makes him think about his sister's words. In desperation, he calls up Lisa, knowing that she hasn't left for her late shift yet. Hey, Lisa, I hope I'm not catching you at a tough time. Lisa laughed. No, not at all. What's going on? I have a strange proposition for you, and please don't hang up before I can ask it. I'd appreciate that. Um, all right. What do you want to ask? Robert cleared his throat. 
My parents are coming into town soon and they are on my back about getting engaged and then married. According to them, I have been single for far too long. So, my sister Robin suggested something crazy, but I'm thinking it might work. What did she suggest? She suggested I get someone to pose as my fake fiancé while they are here visiting, and I'm wondering if you would agree to pose as my fiancé. Lisa started to cough as if she wasn't expecting that, but Robert bet she wasn't expecting it. Who would think someone was going to call them up and ask such a thing? I... Robert, this is very sudden, he winced. I know, but you can say no. It's fine, and do you know what? I shouldn't have asked. No, Lisa blurted out. It's all right. I understand why you would want to suggest such a thing, but do you know what? The answer is yes. I want to help. Wait, yes? She laughed softly. Yes, I want to help. It's just for a few days, right? Yes, and I'll take care of everything. We have a big guest room here, so you'll be more than comfortable. Robert can't believe that she said yes, but he isn't going to look a gift horse in the mouth. She agreed to help him, so he is going to be grateful for the fact that Lisa was going to help him out in this difficult time. Lisa must be crazy. That's the only explanation for her currently packing a small suitcase with some clothes and other personal items. While she's packing, her best friend and roommate Bernie coughs to get her attention. Bernie, I need to pack. Yes, but why are you packing? She paused. I... I'm going to spend a few nights with Robert. You know the father of Jenny? Your former patient? Bernie asked with a raised brow. Yes. Bernie blinked. But why? I'm going to pretend to be his fiancée while his parents are in town to get them off his back. Lisa, are you crazy? No, she whispers. Okay, a bit crazy, but I want to help him out. He's become a friend over the past few weeks and I adore Jenny. Bernie frowned. What do you even get out of it? Free room and board at a lovely house that could be considered a mini mansion? Still not worth it. Bernie muttered before gasping. You have feelings for him, don't you? Lisa winced, ducking her head so she didn't have to look at her. I don't want to talk about that. Oh my God, Lisa, this is crazy. Does this guy even feel anything towards you but friendship? Bernie, I am doing this and you're not going to convince me to change my mind, okay? Bernie shook her head. Fine, but if it blows up in your face, don't hesitate to come to me, okay? You are my best friend, and I don't want you to get hurt. I won't, Bernie, I promise. Despite her promises to her friend, Lisa isn't sure. But she's promised Robert she was going to do this, and this is what she's going to do. After she finished packing, Bernie hugged Lisa and sent her on her way. She hopped in her car and drove the now familiar drive to Robert's house. The second Robert opened the door to let her in, Jenny ran over and hugged her around the waist. Lisa, you came. I did, Jenny, she said, laughing. I don't know. She wasn't sure what Robert had told Jenny and didn't want to say anything that might cause trouble. He wouldn't tell her the truth, but what lie could he tell her that wouldn't cause her concern? Jenny, let me take Lisa up to her room and then you can show her around the house, okay? Jenny pouted. Okay, Daddy, but hurry. I want to show her around. Laughing, Robert motioned for Lisa to follow him. The room is just down the hall from Jenny's, so don't be surprised if she tries to get in there to wake you up. I'll make sure to talk with her when you work the late shift, but just in case, there is a lock on the door. Lisa nodded. All right, thanks for the warning. Also, thank you for this. I know it was a crazy request, but my parents just won't drop this, especially my mother. It's all right, Lisa assured Robert. I can't say I understand how that is because my parents haven't ever pressured me in that way, but I can sympathize. He winced. Yeah, my parents are very involved, probably over-involved. Speaking of your parents, we need to come up with a backstory. Robert grinned. I was thinking we could go over it tonight after Jenny goes to bed. What do you say? I say that's a great idea. The two of them sit down after Jenny goes to bed that night in the kitchen sharing a nightcap, as they try to produce a backstory for their fake relationship. Lisa suggested that it would be a clever idea if they went with a version of the truth. They met after Lisa took care of Jenny in the hospital. From there, it was a whirlwind romance. 
the two started spending all their free time together, eventually getting to the point where they confessed their love to each other. Then Robert proposed and Lisa accepted. It was still following the same timetable. The only difference is that the two of them became romantically involved rather than just staying friends. Lisa thought it was always a great idea to craft a lie while basing it on a lot of truth. The reason for this was that it would ensure they wouldn't slip up or make a mistake. Can I ask you something? Lisa asked after they produced their backstory. He nodded. Of course. What did you tell Jenny? I told her the two of us have been spending a lot of time together and left it at that. She is only six, so if she has any more questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Lisa smiled. Fair enough. But even though they managed to produce a decent backstory, the two of them still had to deal with appearing like a real couple in front of their parents. The idea of it made Lisa blush, but she wasn't opposed to it. Bernie was right. Lisa was starting to realize she had feelings for Robert, but she wasn't going to let just a crush cause her to act too irrationally. The fact was that Lisa was doing this to help Robert because she did care for him. She hadn't known him for very long, but she still wanted to help. It's because of this strange connection between him and Jenny. Lisa didn't know why it was there. The more she thought about it, the less it made sense. She figured it was good to push it out of her mind and not let it bother her. This whole charade was just going to be a few days. Then she would be able to go back to her normal life, as none of this had ever happened. Up until Robert's parents arrived, they kept rehearsing the backstory. The day they arrived, Lisa remembered panicking up until coming down to greet them at the door. She kept fussing with her pink blouse, smoothing out wrinkles that weren't there. It'll be okay. Grammy and Grandpa will love you, Jenny giggled. Lisa smiled nervously. I hope so, kiddo. When Robert opened the door, Lisa came face to face with his parents, Alice and Jack. Jenny ran over to her grandparents, dragging Lisa with her because she was still holding her hand. This is Lisa. Lisa blinked, trying not to blush in embarrassment. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Lisa, Alice greeted, looking her up and down. It was so blatant that Robert wrapped an arm around Lisa. This is Lisa. I care a lot about her. Lisa blushed. Why don't we go sit down at the table? Dinner is almost ready. The dinner started a bit awkwardly, but the longer it went on, the more comfortable everyone became. Lisa tried her best to be warm and inviting, which wasn't easy because she could be a timid person. But, as it turns out, she is good to her parents. Jack warmed up to her right way. It took some time for Alice, but by the end of the night, she was laughing and looking thrilled that Robert had found her. What Lisa had to do was keep reminding herself that this was not the truth. The two of them were not in a relationship and it was all fake. Once they left and Jenny was in bed, Lisa and Robert sat down in the living room. They liked you, you know, Robert told Lisa firmly. I don't know if it was easy to tell, but they do like you. Lisa smiled. It was hard to tell at first, but I got the feeling at the end that they were warming up to me, which is great because the plan is working. Yeah, it'll give me some time to breathe without them constantly nagging me about getting married again. She hadn't asked about his late wife, but Robert had told her a few things. The two of them were married in their twenties, eventually starting a family. It was difficult for them, but then they had Jenny. About a year or so after Jenny was born, she got sick and passed a few more months later. Lisa could tell he still missed and loved his wife dearly, so she didn't want to bring it up at all. She just nodded, trying to show that she was listening to him. It was nice that he was willing to share such a personal thing with her. The worst part is it was making Lisa realize that she was starting to fall for Robert. She already knew she had a crush on him, but it might be more than a crush. When she first realized this, Lisa just stood there staring at her reflection in the mirror. How could she be so stupid and fall for Robert? This was all a sham. The two of them were just keeping up a farce until his parents left. But why couldn't her heart understand what her brain does? Despite how nervous she was, Lisa enjoyed spending time with Robert's parents. Jack was quiet and didn't talk much, which was a lot like Lisa. She enjoyed just sitting and watching TV or sitting out on the porch. 
While out there, they drank their coffee, not saying much. There isn't much to say because sometimes you don't need to talk. Silence was one of those things that was awkward for some while with others it was something they loved. Lisa didn't mind silence. She found it comforting, in a way. But with Alice, she was the type of person who loved to talk, talk, talk. Honestly, Lisa realized that she talked enough for both. Alice seemed happy to talk to both, so Lisa just let her talk. Then there was Jenny. Lisa loved Jenny and didn't mind saying that because she did. Jenny was a great kid. Anyone would be lucky to have Jenny as their kid or just in their life. This was not good. She was falling into a trap, starting to imagine herself as a member of the family, as strange as that sounded. Lisa wouldn't mind being a part of their family. They were a great family. She tried to just focus on living in the moment. When she was at the house, Lisa enjoyed spending time with all of them. Spending time with Robert was different than spending time with his parents and Jenny because when she was with him, she felt butterflies in her stomach. It was like nothing she had ever felt before. So Lisa would sometimes watch him when he didn't realize she was looking, imagining what it was like to be with him for real. Oh, Bernie was right. This was a bad idea. But what could Lisa do? She promised that she would stick this out until Robert's parents left and she did hate to break a promise. Most of her family was gone. Lisa's parents had passed a few years ago and she had no siblings. Her family was mostly Bernie along with a splattering of friends. It felt nice to be a part of a family again. In a few days, a week or so, she would be going back to her life. Lisa would be in the small apartment that she shared with Bernie, trying her best to move on. She would like to stay friends with Robert and be there for Jenny if she needed anything, but it might be too hard for them to stay in her life. Lisa was falling hard. Being around them and not being able to have a relationship with Robert outside of friendship might be more than she could take. Another member of the family Lisa had a good relationship with was Robin, Robert's sister. She was very outgoing, always having a smile on her face. Robin was over one evening, having joined them for dinner. While Robert was upstairs putting Jenny to bed, she was talking with her on the porch. Hey, you know what's funny? Robin said, shifting the conversation from a recent sports game. Lisa didn't know anything about sports, so when Robin started talking about baseball and how her team lost, she just nodded. She didn't know a thing about baseball or any sport. What's funny? The fact that you and Jenny look so much alike. Lisa blinked. What? You and Jenny look like twins. Well, I know she doesn't look like Robert very much, but she probably just looks like her mother. Robin shook her head. No, that's not possible. Natalie, Robert's late wife, had fertility issues, so an egg donor was used. She did carry the baby, but Nat wasn't biologically related to Jenny, though she was her mother in every way that counted. Wait, what? Lisa squeaked out. They used an egg donor? Yep, and don't look so surprised. It's not that strange for someone to use an egg donor. No, I know. I just am surprised because Robert never mentioned it. Robin shrugged. He's not big on talking about it because, honestly, he doesn't think much about it. To him, all that matters is that Jenny was born healthy. It was difficult to pretend that nothing was wrong, but Lisa's mind was reeling. To learn that Robert and his late wife Natalie had used an egg donor was hard to digest because, at one point, Lisa had been an egg donor. At the time, she needed money and decided to donate her eggs. She knew that they were used by a couple but had no idea what happened afterward because it was anonymous. Then throw in the fact that Jenny looked like her and it was enough to shake Lisa to the very core. Could Jenny be biologically hers? Now that she thought about it, Jenny did look a lot like her. But it was crazy to think that out of all the people in the world, Robert and his late wife Natalia would use the egg that she donated. She quickly shook her head. It was crazy to think that Jenny was biologically hers. While Jenny did look like her, it would be too much of a coincidence. Lisa shoved it to the back of her mind, refusing to think about it much longer. Eventually, Robert came back down and rejoined them. She smiled at him, deciding it was best to go to bed. There was still a lot on her mind and being awake wasn't going to help. Robert, Robin, I'm going to go off to bed. I'll see you two in the morning, okay? He nodded. All right. See you in the morning. 
Lisa tried to walk up the stairs slowly so it didn't look like she was running, but she felt like running. She was running away from the fact that Robin had put a crazy idea into her mind. More than that, though, she was running from her feelings for Robert. When Lisa got up the next morning, she felt even more conflicted. She had to keep reminding herself that in just two days, the two of them would be breaking up. Lisa would be going back to her own life while Robert and Jenny would go back to theirs. It was going to be difficult to talk to Jenny about this. Jenny was under the impression that they were together. They had told Robert's parents that the two of them were engaged to be married, but had yet to tell Jenny. This was something they purposely did because they didn't want to confuse her. Telling a little girl about an engagement needed to be done gently. Jenny may have lost her mother five years ago and couldn't remember her at all, but she still loved her. Naturally, she did. Natalia was her mother. Robert talked about her all the time to keep her alive for Jenny. Alice and Jack accepted that as an answer. The truth was Robert and Lisa didn't want to complicate things for Jenny. She was doing an excellent job of pretending that nothing was wrong and that she wasn't falling madly in love with Robert. It was hard to tell how Robert felt. He was an overly friendly guy, always smiling and showing affection to those in his inner circle, whether they were friends or not. Did he think of her as just a friend, or was there something more there? Lisa knew she could solve this by just asking Robert how she felt. All she would have to do was approach him one night to tell him how she felt, but there was that fear. Fear that Robert would tell Lisa he didn't feel the same. He thought of her as just a friend. He was grateful she helped him out and was always so good to Jenny, but that was all it was and nothing more. One moment Lisa almost confessed to him. She was ready to go to bed when Robert walked past her, their hands brushing up against each other. Robert, she blurted out. He paused. Yes? Lisa opened her mouth to speak, but nothing else came out. Lisa, is everything okay? She smiled. Yes, I just wanted to say goodnight. Good night, he said, laughing. It was so difficult to watch him walk away and not shout at the top of her lungs that she loved him. But he walked away, and she didn't stop him. Lisa went up to the guest room, throwing herself onto the bed. She buried her face in the pillow, wishing she didn't fall so hard for Robert. But what was done was done. Robert was in love with Lisa. It's hard to say when he realized he was in love with her, but one moment he looked at her and was just overwhelmed with the amount of love he had for her. He hadn't felt like this about someone since his wife. After losing Natalia, Robert never thought he would find love again. What he did was just accept that he would be alone for the next few years. But it wasn't so bad. Jenny was the most important person in his life and always would be. She was his daughter, the child Natalia and he kept trying to have. It took a long time, but they were able to have kids. Fate was cruel to take his wife from him and Jenny so soon. This was something we're still struggling with. The fake relationship between him and Lisa was ending. It was going to end in about two days once his parents officially left. But before she left, he was going to confess his feelings for her. He had no idea if she felt the same about him. It was hard to say, though he had a feeling she might. Lisa was pretty expressive, so it was leading towards Robert to figure that Lisa also had feelings for him. Sometimes a person must take a risk when it comes to love. Robert was willing to take that risk because he didn't know if would ever feel this way about another person ever again. The night before Robert's parents were set to leave the city, he and Lisa sat in the living room just enjoying a nightcap. Jenny was fast asleep, so they were just winding down, enjoying the last few moments they would have as a fake couple. Then somehow things started to shift. He didn't know how it happened, but one minute they were talking and the next, they were kissing. The only reason they broke the kiss was because they needed to part for air. Robert brushed his thumb across her cheek, smiling at her. Hey! Lisa giggled, obviously tipsy. Hi, do you want to know something crazy? What? he asked, smiling. I think I might be Jenny's biological mother. Robert froze. What? I never told you, but I donated my eggs to a couple anonymously a few years ago. 
When Robin told me you and your late wife had to use an ex-donor, after saying the two of us looked a lot alike, I started thinking. But that would be crazy, right? He never had a chance to say anything because Lisa started to yawn, eventually falling over onto the couch and falling to sleep. Not wanting to wake her, Robert covered her with a blanket and closed the doors to the living room. While she lay there, he went to his room and just sat at the end of the bed, staring ahead. He always thought the two of them looked alike, but thought it was just an amusing little thing. To learn that Lisa had donated an egg to a couple on top of that fact was crazy. There was no way it could be true, no way possible, but he couldn't stop thinking about it. It got to the point that Robert decided he was going to do a test, a simple DNA test. He took a strand of Jenny's hair and Lisa's hair from her brush. Doing that made him feel a little slimy, but it was the only way to get an answer. Lisa barely remembered that she blurted that out. She asked him if she said anything strange, and he said she was fine. It was so Lisa wouldn't get embarrassed or nervous. With his parents staying an extra few days just because they were like that, the two of them had to keep up the farce. But it worked out because it took three to five days for a paternity test. On the day his parents finally did get a plane out of the city, Robert got the DNA test back. It said that Lisa was Jenny's biological mother. He had to sit down because his legs started to shake, making him feel weak. How was this possible? The chance of this happening was slim to none, but it happened. It almost seemed like fate in a way. Robert knew he had to tell her that he loved her and that she was Jenny's biological mother. She had a right to know. This had to bring them closer together. Lisa loved Jenny, and it would help explain why they had a bond. Right at this moment, Lisa was packing to head back to the apartment. He hurried back to the house, grateful to still see her car in the parking lot. Jenny was out with Robin so she wouldn't get upset, seeing Lisa pack her clothes and get ready to leave. Lisa, can we talk? Lisa blinked. Yes, but I need to pack if I want to be ready to leave before Jenny comes home. Swallowing, Robert decided just to hand her the DNA test results. What is this? It's DNA test results that prove you are Jenny's mother, Robert explained. I lied that night when I said you didn't say anything weird. You told me you once donated eggs and thought you were Jenny's biological mother. It turns out you are. Lisa paled. I... you took my DNA. From a hairbrush. I know it's a little creepy, but I wanted to be sure. What does it matter? It matters because I love you, Robert told her. There it was. He had now said that he loved her, but instead of looking happy, she looked scared. No, you're only saying that because of Jenny. Robert swallowed. Lisa, I love you. No, there is no future for us. So please just let me go and we'll get on with our lives. Lisa pushed past Robert and he tried to reach her, but he wasn't fast enough. He wanted to chase after her. However, it might not come off well, so all he could do was stand there, watching the second love of his life leave for what felt like forever. Robert wasn't doing very well. It had been a few weeks since Lisa went back to her normal life and he was miserable. Jenny was confused, crying that Lisa wasn't coming over at all. She had called a few times to do some video chats with Jenny, but that was all it was. Lisa wouldn't talk to him at all. The more time that passed, the more miserable he became. It got to the point where Robin accused him of sulking around the house, acting worse than Jenny was. Well, I feel like crap, Robin. What do you want me to say? Robin huffed, glaring at him. You need to go talk to Lisa right away and tell her that you love her. I already did. Well, tell her again and make it clear that it had nothing to do with Jenny. You fell in love with her long before you ever found out the truth about her being Jenny's biological mother. He shook his head. She doesn't feel the same way. Don't be stupid, big brother. She does love you. Anyone could see it. Robert swallowed. I thought she might be, but then she told me nothing could happen between us. I think Lisa is just scared, so what you need to do is go to her and talk to her about it. You know where she lives, so go visit her. Robert frowned. Why don't I call her? You want to call her and talk to her about how much you love her? Robin asked in disbelief, giving him a look. Robert, come on. 
I know you aren't that bad when it comes to matters of the heart. He didn't know what to say. All he could do was sit down and bury his face in his hands. Robin, I'm terrified of screwing this up. I love her so much and Jenny loves her. The three of us could be a family, but my dumb self scared her off by shoving a DNA test at her. She sat down beside him and sighed. Yes, that's true. I wish you had come to me first, because then I would have warned you about doing such a thing. It's not the best idea you've had lately. I'm going to talk to her, Robert said to her firmly. And he did plan, too. The issue was working up the nerve to talk to her about it. Robert kept pushing it off until he realized that he no longer could wait. He left works early and drove to her apartment. When he first got out of the car and knocked at the door, he was wondering if she was going to answer. But then Lisa did answer the door, looking shocked to see him standing there. Lisa, I want to say something to you, and I'd appreciate it if you'd let me say it. I don't even need to come in. Lisa moved out of the way. No, come in. But only for a few moments, I have to start getting to work. I love you, he said the moment he walked into the apartment and Lisa shut the door behind him. And I know what you are going to say, but the truth is, it has nothing to do with Jenny. I've been wanting to tell you I loved you for a while now. Then you told me about Jenny that night and I got sidetracked. It would have been better to tell you I loved you first, but I made that mistake and for that I'm sorry. She blinked. I don't know what to say. You don't know what to say, Robert asked, wincing. Okay, well, just give it to me straight. If you don't love me, that's okay, but don't try to push me away. Without a word, Lisa approached Robert and then stood up on her tiptoes to place a gentle kiss on his lips. It was hesitant and a bit nervous, but it was a kiss. He cupped her cheek, deepening the kiss as much as he could. I love you too, Lisa whispered, cheeks flushed. The reason I didn't say anything is because I was scared, but I now know I love you so much. He grinned, drawing her into another kiss. There were still a lot of things the two of them had to figure out, but he was so damned happy right now. Lisa and he just stood there for a while, holding each other in a tight embrace. It was scary to think that for a moment he was willing to just not put his heart on the line again. When Robert got a chance, he had to thank his sister for giving him the kick in the butt he desperately needed. We still have a lot to talk about, Robert admitted out loud. Lisa nodded, smiling. Yeah, but we'll figure it out. From the moment they confessed their feelings to each other, Lisa and Robert decided to take things slowly. It was important not to rush into this because they wanted to make sure this was going to last. For over six months, the two of them took it slow, going on dates. Sometimes Jenny was invited, but other times it was just with Robert and Jenny. Then, after six months, Robert asked Jenny if she would move in. She threw her arms around him, telling him that she'd love to. Jenny still had no idea that she and Lisa were biologically related. One day they would tell her, but she was still a little girl. She wouldn't understand right now. When Lisa moved in, it wasn't hard to adjust to living there again. She had already lived there before. This time, she just wasn't living there under pretenses. While they had been intimate, the two of them didn't share a bed. Lisa wanted her own space, something Robert agreed with. But after living together for six months, Robert proposed. Lisa was shocked but threw her arms around him and said yes. Once he proposed, he suggested the two of them start sharing a bedroom. It felt like a logical next step. Robert's parents still had no idea that the two of them had never really been engaged. It was easier to let Alice and Jack think that they had been engaged the whole time. The reason it was taking a long time was that they wanted to get to truly know each other before making a commitment that was going to last a long time. There were times when Lisa would wake up and find herself unable to believe everything that happened. How had she gone from single and no kids to engaged to be married and about to be a stepmom to a wonderful little girl? It almost made her believe in fate. How else would anyone else be able to explain that she ended up falling in love with the man who used her donated egg to start a family with his late wife? Under no circumstances did Lisa ever want to replace Natalia. She was still her mother who had tragically lost her life before Jenny got a chance to know her. 
Lisa would make sure to always keep Natalia's memory alive because it was not only the right thing to do, but the important thing to do as well. Lisa would try her best to fill those shoes and be the best stepmother she could be to Jenny. From the moment she first saw that little girl in bed, she felt a connection towards her. She wanted to help and protect her. Now, Lisa would be able to do that every day. It might not be the most traditional way to get a family, but Lisa was going to have the family she always wanted. A husband, an amazing kid, a sister-in-law, and a parent-in-law as well. Maybe she and Robert would even add to their family one day, but they had all the time in the world to decide that. Thank you for listening to this story. Please share your thoughts in the comments. 